Growing up in Jamaica, we have been taught to work hard and save your money so you can accumulate interest and live off the proceeds in your golden years. Having money in our savings account has always given us a sense of security and a feeling of accomplishment for our hard work. This may have been true 30, 20 or even 10 years ago, but in the present Jamaican reality, this thinking is a very bad idea. In this video, I am going to show you why this is so and what you should be doing instead with your savings. Sit back, relax, put on your thinking cap and deeply digest what I'm about to present to you. Enjoy. Those of us who are old enough can remember the glory days of the 1990s and the early 2000s when it was not uncommon to be earning 20-30% to 30 per annum on your accounts at different financial institutions. At one stage, some places were offering almost 50%. These high rates eventually resulted in a lot of companies deciding to close and liquidate their assets and simply place the proceeds on government interest-bearing instruments instead of struggling to make a 15-20% to 20 per annum return on their investments. This created a toxic economic environment as little to no reproduction was taking place with the government just printing money to stay afloat. They had no choice but to begin the painstaking process of lowering interest rate and incentivizing businesses to ramp up production to increase GDP and ease the spiraling debt crisis. Forward now to present day Jamaica when the interest rate on Jamaican savings account is very low. In fact, to use the word low might be an overstatement because in most cases the rate is nil. In most banks we're talking 1-3% to if you're lucky. This means that if you have a million dollars in your savings account you get a maximum $30,000 per year before tax which works out to be about less than $3,000 per month or less than $100 a day. In other words, you cannot even afford to buy a small bone, much less a patty, for the day on your $1 million in the bank. Total madness. No way you can survive on that. To make matters worse, not only do you have to worry about the bad eye, meaning interest, there's another eye that is far worse. Inflation. The inflation rate for 2021 was roughly 6% and this has been steadily rising over the past couple of years. What this means is that items that cost a million dollars at the beginning of the year now cost one million and sixty thousand dollars at the end of the year, therefore eroding the value of your money. The net effect is that by putting your money in a savings bank account, you are in fact losing value every year. At the end of the next 10 years, you have lost over half the value of your savings. Utterly really ridiculous. And play stupidity if you ask me. It makes no sense whatsoever giving the bank your money, they're giving you next to nothing in interest, and they turn around and use your money for loans at exorbitant rate, lying in their pockets while you suffer. Now, does this mean you should withdraw your money from the bank and stop using them altogether? Of course not. These financial institutions are useful and they should be an integral part of your financial life. You just need to utilize their services wisely. Instead of having all your savings in a savings account, this is what I recommend. Now, please bear in mind, I am not a financial advisor. So take what I'm going to say with a grain of salt and decide if it makes sense to you. Firstly, use your savings account to hold funds that you will only need for your living expenses. It is also advisable to have enough funds for around 3 months living expenses in case of unexpected emergencies such as a job loss or unforeseen medical issues. You need to have liquid funds that you can access immediately for these issues 
and having a bank account is the perfect thing for that. You should be putting all of your excess funds to work for you. For persons who want to play it safe, I would recommend that you speak to one of your financial advisors at your bank. Ask them about higher income earning options. All of these institutions, they have a department that deals with capital investments such as stocks, bonds, and other mutual funds. These investments typically give you returns above the inflation rate. So the net effect is that the net value of your money will always increase at the end of the year. If possible, try to have some US denominated investments as this will provide you with a hedge against the valuation of the local currency. The second option is one that I strongly suggest everybody take regardless if you have funds invested in the equity market or not. One of my mentors, the late Jim Rohn, he said, wages make you a living, profits make you a fortune. Find a business you can invest in and you work as hard and smart as you can to make it profitable. There are many businesses you can start in your spare time that heat of that door will require a fortune to get up and running. Use whatever money you have to do this. Let me give you an example. If you have a creative mind, you may decide to buy some plain t-shirt and then you buy a printing machine to print some unique designs on it. You can sell these shirts at your office or your local flea market or you can sell them online through your Instagram account or on eBay or Amazon. You can negotiate with a craft vendor to either sell them directly for a wholesale price of course or you can let them sell them to tourists and you split the profits. Another example is you can buy repossessed cars and you can rent or you can resell them. A next example is that if you're good with cameras, you can buy some professional equipment and you offer photographic or video recording services for funerals, weddings, birthdays, etc. The possibilities are endless. You just need to be creative and come up with ideas that match your skill set and within your budget. The money you make from one week of profit will more than likely be more than the interest you get for the year on your savings account. No comparison there. In closing, let me say that it is obvious that having more money than you need for your living expenses in your savings account is a bad financial idea. The funds devalue every year and there are many other options available that will allow you to stay ahead of inflation. Use that excess funds to invest in higher income yielding accounts and also use some of it to start a small business where you can earn profits on a regular basis. You do not want to get to your retirement years only to discover that the money you have saved is not enough for your living expenses and you have to be relying on family and friends or the government for assistance. I hope this video has been a thought-provoking one and has got you thinking about how to allocate your financial resources. Please let me know what you think by dropping a comment or a question below and I will answer as quick as I can. Kindly click the subscribe button below and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Catch you in the next one and always remember, money matters.